Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Orphan Car Garage YouTube. I have a fun one here in front of us today. <clears throat> it's an Oldsmobile, and boy, did the mighty fall. This car was built in 1975. And in 1975, Oldsmobile was pretty much on top of the world. They were building some of the best-selling cars in America. In fact, the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme by 1977 was the best-selling car in America. Just amazing. Uh, Well-built cars, great dealership network, uh, innovative designs, some real reliable build quality and engines and transmissions. And yet... Um, by the early 2000s, the brand was dead. And uh, for that, for that, we all bow our heads because uh, it's really quite a tragedy, quite a, quite a General Motors tragedy. I feel the same way about Pontiac, but that's not what we have here in front of us. So I'll get into that when I preview our next convertible. It's coming up within the next couple of weeks, which is a Pontiac convertible, sort of the Pontiac version of this car in front of us. This car in front of us is a 1975, Oldsmobile Delta 88 Royale convertible and um, it's interesting to mention that by the early 1970s convertibles had sort of really fallen out of favor with the American uh, car buyer and they were accounting for just a minuscule amount of production by by 1972 I believe they had really really faltered and there's a lot of different reasons for that um, air conditioning had become far more popular more standard in more cars. Uh, the advent of sunroofs, uh, people preferred those because they were less costly. And there were also um, rumors raging that the American uh, Highway Safety Bureau was going to outlaw convertibles with upcoming strict rollover guidelines that the American car manufacturers were gonna have to abide by. And of course, a convertible probably wouldn't fare well in those rollover tests. That never happened. Uh, the safety administration never banned convertibles, but um, due to the fact that the car companies thought that they might and sales just weren't there to uh, justify it, they decided to end the convertible production. And uh, General Motors did it in 1975 with most of their lines, with the exception of Cadillac, which soldiered on for one more year, as most of you probably know, with the Eldorado, which ended and was supposed to be the last American convertible. That didn't happen thanks to Mr. Iacocca in 1982. But again, another story for another time. Oldsmobile along with Chevrolet and Pontiac and Buick ended their convertible production with their full size lineup in 1975. Here we have a 1975 Oldsmobile, uh, which to be f honest in my estimation is about the prettiest one. I even, I even prefer these over the Cadillacs. I just, love the design of these <clears throat> Delta 88s and I've owned, <coughs> excuse me, I've owned several of them. This particular example is stunning and it's original. This car has never been painted. <clears throat> Real pretty powder blue color. I don't know what Oldsmobile called it. I probably should have checked that and I didn't, but it's, we'll call it powder blue. It's real, real pretty. We have this paint. This is original paint. We had it all completely professionally corrected. And um, you'll see very few flaws in it. There is a few, and I'll get to those as we do a walk around, but overall, extremely well-preserved vehicle. Just real, real stunning car, beautiful chrome and trim. Uh, this particular car has the white vinyl interior, which was what most of these were built with. Um, this one has a split bench seat, a 60-40 split bench seat in the front, which is kind of fun and interesting. I didn't see that too often. Um, that being said, while we're on the subject, other than that split bench seat, which I think was an option, that's probably the only option that this car had. That being said, the, the Royale uh, convertible came with a lot of standard features, like white wall tires and power steering and power brakes and a power convertible top, uh, all this extra trim, body side moldings, uh, upgraded interior, things like that. But as far as the option list goes, whoever bought this car new, ordered this car new, didn't check many boxes. Um, in fact, probably didn't check any boxes. This car does not even have air conditioning from the factory. Um, it does have the power top switch over there, which was, again, was standard. But if this car had cruise control, a power antenna, or rear window defogger, which actually was available on the convertible, those switches would be all on that 
wood grain dash paneling and none of it is there. This is a, this is a pretty basic car. Odometer shows 93,000 original miles, which we assume is correct given the condition of the car. There again, you see the white vinyl interior, those crank windows. If everybody remembers what crank windows are, this car is void of power windows, of course. It doesn't have air conditioning, so didn't check the box for power windows or locks either. To me, I think that's a benefit. I've owned a lot of these cars from the 70s and the 80s, and let's face it, the build quality wasn't the greatest. So a lot of them need work nowadays in those departments. Yes, it's nice to have air conditioning and it's nice to have power windows. I'm not gonna deny that. But generally speaking, talking, speaking from someone that's bought a lot of these cars, they're usually broken and need work. And if they're not broken, chances are they will break at some point. Here, we have nothing to worry about. Good old fashioned crank windows, a heater and no air conditioning, um, manual seats and locks. To me, that's a benefit. Um, but interesting nonetheless, I haven't seen many of these cars so basic. Beautiful wire wheel covers. We put brand new 15 inch white wall tires on those rims and polished up the wire wheel covers. You'll notice in the back, the vehicle still sports its original dealer sticker from where it was bought new at Clark Oldsmobile Pontiac in East Hampton, Massachusetts. Now you're gonna to say to yourself, this car was bought in Massachusetts and spent its life in Massachusetts. It must be rotted and rusty and full of Bondo. No, no, and no. This car is incredibly solid. I have many, many pictures of the undercarriage. It is spotless. When I was cleaning the trunk, I found a lot of uh, golf paraphernalia under the trunk mat. Golf tees, um, schedules, a map of the Hampton, um, I'm sorry, the Amherst, Massachusetts Golf Club. So this was someone's golf car. This was not someone's daily driver in the winter. Absolutely, positively not. The car is virtually rust-free. There are a couple little spots, most notably here on the passenger side front door at the bottom. Right there in the corner, you'll see. That's the only spot that I can tell you about because the rest of the car is incredibly solid. I've had many of these. I've had many of these back in the 1980s and notoriously these rear wheel lips would bubble and rot right along this edge. There's absolutely nothing and that's never been repaired. All original. See the frame in there? Very, very clean. This car was not driven winters. There's absolutely no possible way this car was driven in the winter. I do have a clean Massachusetts title for the car. Again, so original paint and there's some chips there showing down to the original uh, primer from the factory. So there's some odd chipping there over the right headlight bezel that the next owner could easily touch up. The touch up paint is available for this car through various vendors online. I wanted to show the car in its in its original raw condition. I don't I didn't want to try to paint or hide anything. I wanted the owners, the future owners or potential owners to see exactly how we found it. We preserved all the original paint without doing any paint work at all. So there is a couple little chips there, like I said. But overall, there's another little scratch there. Probably typical from servicing the car over the years, mechanics with their tools in their pockets hanging over. <clears throat> so speaking mechanically, this car is equipped with the tried and true Oldsmobile Rocket 350 two barrel carbureted V8 engine, um, which is what most of these cars, even the more loaded ones were equipped with. You could get a 455 higher performance motor. Some of these cars did leave the factory with the 455, but most of these cars left the factory with the 350, which again, I prefer. Just a very reliable, easy to source parts for. So this car was fairly rare. Um, but interestingly enough, they built about 7,200 of these, uh, just shy of 7,200 in its final year in 1975. Interestingly, in 1974, the 1974 Delta 88 Royale convertible, only about, I think, 3,700 were built, if I'm not mistaken. I'll probably be corrected on that, but in the 3,000s, we'll say. So almost double built for 75 as were for 74. And the reason for that is Oldsmobile really touted this as their last convertible and they advertised it as such. So a lot of people ran to the dealer and placed their order for the last Oldsmobile convertible or what they thought would be the last Oldsmobile convertible. Cause the, as we know, the Cutlass um, 
convertible was reintroduced in, I think, 1990 or something. So Oldsmobile did re-enter the convertible, the convertible market in the early 90s. <clears throat> um, but, then, but until then, everybody assumed that this was going to be the last American convertible, the last Oldsmobile convertible, one of the last General Motors convertibles, and they thought they had a future collectible on their hand. So they... Uh, ran to the dealerships and ordered them. The person that ordered this car didn't want to spend a whole lot of extra money. But boy, even though she's fairly base, she's real pretty, real pretty car. That beautiful light blue with the white interior. It has a brand new white convertible top. The top is brand new, and I do have pictures of that top raised. Today was much too nice to have the top up, but I do have plenty of pictures of the top. It's brand new and it's white, which contrasts nicely with that white interior. So here we have end of summer, heading into what I think is the best convertible season, the fall. I love the fall for convertibles. And if you're up here in the Northeast at all this year, you'll know that it was very hot, almost too hot to have the top down on any convertible. So we're heading into fall, late summer, which I think is the perfect time of year for convertibles, really, and many nice days still to come, well into December in many cases. So now is a good time to purchase a convertible. And because we're heading towards the end of the summer, I've priced this car right. We've priced this car far, far below Haggerty price guide. And don't take my word for it. Go on to Haggerty and type in 1975 Delta 88 Royale convertible. And you'll see, you'll see what they've valued these cars at. Over $20,000 in excellent condition. We at Orphan Car Garage are trying to show that we can keep the collector car market affordable. We're fighting an uphill battle at times, but we de we're determined to do it. And that's my goal, and that's why I started this business. We're gonna keep everything affordable. This car today is priced at $14,900. $14,900, thousands below the book value. This car probably won't last, and nor should it. This is an original, unrestored, beautiful running, beautifully maintained 1975 Oldsmobile convertible. If you want more details, give me a call. A lot of work has been done to this car above the new top. Lots of mechanical upgrades, lots of suspension parts, brakes, ball joints, springs, and shocks. We just changed the oil. This car is ready to go. It's very turnkey. You could drive it anywhere. So if you like what you see, give me a call, 508-954-8090. Check me out on the web, orphancargarage.com, and find us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, Subscribe to us on YouTube. Give me a shout. Let me know what you think. Do you own one of these cars? Have you owned one of these cars? Let me know. Thank you.